Your party is being sent to a castle where a once-renowned wizard has reportedly gone mad and is trying to build some sort of evil army. As you all enter the surprisingly unlocked front door and make your way to the top floor, nothing seems very dangerous at all. As you round the last bend of the staircase, you hear the incoherent mumbling of the old wizard. He looks at you, crooked eye, and mouth agape. Uh, hey, we heard you might need some help. She shrugs nonchalantly as she attempts to coax any amount of information out of the undoubtedly insane man. The wizard stares through Neria and shouts something about how he's the only one who truly sees, but he can make you all see. Excitedly, he runs over to a large wooden door and throws it open. What's inside is at least eight spectators, and they rush the party. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. The spectator. A medium aberration, lawful neutral. A spectator is a type of beholder, much weaker than the standard variety, that enters our realm of existence through a summoning ritual done on this side. An aspect of this ritual is using four beholder eye stalks as components, which become the four eye stalks on the sides of the monster's head. They're also much smaller than a standard beholder, only about four feet in diameter. When summoned, the spectator sets itself up to guard whatever location or treasure the conjurer wishes for up to 101 years. They will allow no one but their master through the place they guard, unless the aberrations are instructed otherwise. If what they guard is destroyed or stolen, they will preemptively disappear. Though they possess the ability to speak, they much rather prefer to use telepathy, and though they remain civil and conversational to those that aren't trying to betray the guard's orders, it's readily apparent how much the isolation has affected their minds, referencing imaginary enemies, mimicking the voice of their summoner, and any other personality quirks that could come to mind. Similarly to the beholder, a spectator thinks it's the greatest of its kind, and almost always will attempt to battle any other spectators to the death. After a spectator serves its purpose, or its conjurer dies, they are then given free will to do what they wish. However, most generally decide to continue guarding the place they once were forced to, and as time passes by, without any contact with any outsiders, their mind wanders further than ever. Now for the stat block. They have an AC of 14, natural armor. They have 68 plus 12, or 39, average hit points. They have a walking speed of 0 feet, but a hovering speed of 30 feet. They have 8 strength, a negative 1 detriment, 14 dexterity, a plus 2 bonus, 14 constitution, a plus 2 bonus, 13 intelligence, a plus 1 bonus, 14 wisdom, a plus 2 bonus, and 11 charisma, no bonus. They have a plus 6 bonus to the perception skill, are immune to the prone condition, have dark vision within 120 feet, and have a passive perception of 16. They speak the deep speech in under common languages, but prefer to use telepathy to communicate, and they have a challenge rating of 3, valuing them at 700 experience each. As with other Beholderkin, they have two actions, the first of these being a bite action, a melee weapon attack with a plus 1 to hit and a 5 foot reach, one target. On hit, the bite deals 1d6 minus 1 or 2 average piercing damage. The second action is its eye rays. The spectator can use up to two random eye rays on any target it can see within 90 feet of it. It can't use the same ray more than once per turn. The rays are Confusion Ray. The target must succeed on a DC 13 wisdom saving throw, or they won't be able to take reactions until next turn. On its turn, the target of the ray is unable to move and they must make a melee or ranged attack against a random target within range. If they can't attack, nothing is done this turn. Paralyzing Ray The target must pass a DC 13 constitution saving throw or be paralyzed for one minute. At the end of each of the target's turns, they can attempt to repeat the saving throw. Fear Ray The target must pass a DC 13 wisdom save or be frightened for one minute. They can attempt the save again at the end of each of their turns with disadvantage if they can see the spectator. Wounding Ray, a DC 13 save, or else the target is dealt 3 D10 or 16 average necrotic damage, only suffering half as much on a success. Something special to the spectators is that they can magically create enough food and water to sustain themselves for 24 hours. The spectator possesses the spell Reflection Reaction. If the spectator makes a successful reaction against a spell, or a spell attack misses it, the effect of the spell can be reflected onto any creature within 30 feet of the spectator. Any forced saving throws or attack rolls are re-rolled upon doing this. 
All right, you old bastard, you want to play? Let's play, says an annoyed lightning foot as he dashes forward and leaps at the group of spectators, effortlessly slapping two of them into the ground before dropping straight down on top of one and helping his heel meet the central eye of the abomination. Aldor sees his opportunity and casts Fireball at the wall closest to the spectators, setting all but one ablaze. Nerea and Tarkin exchange a glance and begin to work together in removing the problem of the old wizard. As Tarkin rushes him, he casts invisibility and barely escapes the fury of the dwarf's mace. However, Nerea pays slightly more attention and looses an arrow, luckily hitting the maddened fool square in the chest, the arrow piercing his heart as he falls to his death. The few remaining spectators seem to be far less aggressive. Now devoid of purpose, they fight with little to no gumption. Aldor, curious, studies the evils. A deep curiosity begins to overtake him, and he slyly pockets a book that the now-dead wizard kept on his person. Perhaps he can learn some of this conjuration power. A useful tool for the future, he tells himself.